Hi folks, let's walk through how to use a chamfer tool to correctly model and machine this inside chamfer here. And some good tips and tricks along the way. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. First thing I wanna mention is turn your sketches off when you're in Fusion 360 and you're not using the sketches. How do I know they're on? It's from this sort of brown color. So up here I can expand my CAD tree, expand sketches, and sure enough, I can turn that off. So the task at hand is to use a chamfer tool, which we've got modeled up here, again, from the customer is tool 22, as a tapered mill. So what's the right cam strategy to do that? They were struggling with either 3D options because they wanted to kind of progressively move into it, or even a 2D chamfer. The way to do this, bore. Click bore choose our tool 22 so it's not there because of the filters i'll just do an all now it shows up click ok and i will select geometry that area click ok now are we done no we have a problem so remember in fusion 360 anything in the 2d menu is not model aware in other words it will crash your part. It will crash a tool. Now we should see that in a simulation. And we may not uh, because it's not in a rapid move. We'll see it visibly, but it's not actually going to give, uh, actually surprising. Hit play. So you can see what's happening there. If we turn off our CAD model. It's machining way too big. The other way to look at that and by the way, this plugin is called Visual Styles in the uh, in the Fusion 360 app store. Just search for Visual Styles, and you'll see it right here. So switch into wireframe view, go to the bore, simulate, turn my stock off. And now what I can do is left click and hold down your mouse and I can move forward and you can see right there. So it's using the control point, which is the bottom center of this tool based on the top of that. So it's crashing the side of that tool or maybe colliding is a better word than crashing because it wouldn't be at a rapid feed rate, but it would still completely ruin your part. So how do we fix it? Well, the easy way is to reduce the height of that. If we go into the tool library, edit this tool, we can see that the flute length is 10 uh, millimeters. So I can just go into the bore op, edit, heights, top height will be the whole top, negative 10 millimeter, and that's going to reduce it, but there's a better way. And I don't remember this stuff all the time, so Fusion 360 expression, that's the thing you need to know, tool flute length. These expressions are hard to remember and they're case sensitive, so I tend to look them up better but you'll pull up this page. We'll put this link in the video description as well. Control F to look for flute. So there we go, tool flute length. Usually they have a capital letter like halfway through them, which makes them hard. So now, rather than worry about putting in a nominal value, I'm just gonna hit negative tool flute length. And I may reduce the pitch to make it a little bit easier on this tool, we'll say 0.5. We could even do, you, know, you could do repeat pass, finishing pass, multiple passes would let you take um, progressively larger passes. Click OK. And now when we go to simulate, we can see it's starting right there and it's not going to crash into the shoulder of that tool, which is great. But there's one more change that I wanted to make and it's a, I want to adaptive out this shape and, and here's why. This error gives us exact, tells us exactly why, which is shaft or rapid collision with stock. Well, if we take a look with the stock on, let's go back actually to the setup. Uh, let's go to the top. This way when we do a simulation, it's gonna simulate through everything by clicking on this tool. It simulates everything up to that point. I've got stop on collision checked, so when I hit play, it's gonna go ahead and stop right as soon as it sees what it detects as a warning. And so what's happening here, I turn my stock off, 
is we haven't machined this away yet, and so it's wrapping into a bunch of material. We've got an end mill here where we're doing a 2D adaptive to clear out that pocket. What I would do is switch that to a 3D adaptive Tool 15. We'll pick that as our, uh, let's see here, oops, let's do selection of this. Don't, yeah, I'm sure we can do rest machining from previous ops. Let's see what we get. No, nothing. So drag it up <laughs> with rest machining on. If it's previously been machined, uh, it's not going to be able to generate anything. Kind of ironic, right? Calculate toolpath. Okay, so not getting, oop, let's check what's going on here. Okay, who's ready to see me fail? No, seriously, I don't know what's going on, and this is a very strange error. I Googled it, Google is your friend, and as best I can tell, it just looks like a bug, but you gotta learn to help yourself. So a lot of times, I say nine out of 10, I'm making the mistake, not fusion. But I can't figure it out, so what do you do? Try a new setup. Stock will be... Sorry, I say that because I get frustrated too. I want people to see that. It doesn't always go perfectly for me. So setup, select the axis of this. So I've got my a cylinder with a Z point in the right direction. Click OK. So we'll call this JWS for me. Now I'll do 3D adaptive clearing. Tool 15. Click OK. So again, just click OK. We'll get way more tool paths than I care about, but at least I start somewhere and I whittle it, I focus it in, I narrow that tool path down, which is looks like it's not giving me the error I got up here. So I have no idea why. I checked that the body was selected correctly. Uh, I'm just not getting it. Somebody post in the comments below if you know what was going on. So this clearly gives me a tool path. Now we need to contain it to this area here. Right click, edit, geometry, Machini, machining boundary, selection. I'll pick one of these. Actually, you know what? I can pick the bottom one. Because we've already, well, you know, we'll replace the whole operation. We'll do it all in one. We'll get rid of that 2D adaptive. So I'll pick the top of it. Click OK. Problem is it's starting too high. But it does look like if we turn the bottle off, it looks like it's going into the hole. So let's reduce the start height to so heights top height we've instead of being from the stock top selection of here click OK so that looks much better if I'd already done this as a pre-drilled hole somewhere which I probably would try to do I could edit linking pre-drill positions by clicking on this ring It'll plunge straight down in the middle, which can save you a little bit of time. And by the way, if you were trying to do this in production, I would say, go guy, get a form tool made. You know, we've gotten some made mostly from either Carl at Lakeshore Carbide or AB Tool. You can have a form tool made that has the straight shoulder, the side wall, or the chamfer, and then the straight part down here. Now, you'd be plunging it straight down, so you'd need to be conscious of rigidity and, and surface finishes and so forth. But that's how you could rough this shape out. And then afterward, I'd come in with this tool. When you know these chamfer tools, in my opinion, or at least in our shop, they're more specialty tools. Uh, they tend to be more expensive. They tend to be things I want to give good surface finishes. I want to be in good condition. So I don't want to do a lot of material removal with them. They don't have uh, helical flutes that allow them to evacuate chips like an end mill does. So again, let me bang through the roughing with that end mill and come in here and just kiss it with this last one to get a better tool life and a better finish and so forth. So hog that out and then use a bore to walk in there, do your final cleanup. And again, shout out to Rob Lockwood, who's the kind of guy that helps us learn things like using, oops, negative tool. I don't have that saved anymore. Negative tool flute length to be smart with your doing variable parametric cam modeling. Awesome. I love it. Folks, take care. Happy Friday. See you soon.